Hi Mike, I hope you can hear me over all this uh, wind that's around today. I'm going to just do a quick video of the Elgrand and uh, show you some of the features that are on it. Mainly talk about the intelligent keys, show you what they do, um, but uh, there's other stuff as well. So as I mentioned and showed photos before, the body works quite clean on this car. It's got these wheels from a Elgrand Highway Star, they're in nice condition actually, they look alright on this car. The previous owners had some protection on the side of the doors here. Probably kind of a motorist type guy, doesn't want to scratch his car. It's got parking sensors in the bottom of it. On the back, and there's a camera. That's where the camera is. parking pole as well. That will pop up and uh, demonstrate where the corner of the car is when you're manoeuvring it. So first thing about this uh, intelligent key, here it is, you can see it's got a button on the bottom which that's to operate the power door on this left side. This car's only got one power door but this button will press it. If I press this the power door will open. It's pretty handy if you've got an armful of kids or shopping or whatever, you know, you can get the door open without having to put everything down. Just press that again. And it will close. Under the bonnet, well, we've already, I've already shown you pieces of it, but there's just the normal dust that's going to be on any car, but uh, nothing untidy under here. Looks pretty good to me. So this side door is just a manual one, you just slide it open like this, and then you can have a look inside. Quite often on these Elgrands, this is torn. These rubber strips they come away, uh, but this one's all right. It's still intact. Just a quick wipe with a cloth, and they'll be looking good. <coughs> There's two remote controls here. This one is to do mainly with the DVD system and the TV. Obviously, the TV is Japanese and it won't work in the UK. Um, it also operates the navigation. Again, that is not going to work in the UK, but the DVD player will and the back camera. This one here, the top section, you just press this and it removes it. The top section of this controls the aircon, yeah, and the bottom part works the uh, this section, sorry, works the stereo. You can turn the uh, volume up and down. This one operates the interior light, this dome lamp, and the bottom part is for a car with a sunroof, so that would open the sunroof, but this car hasn't got a sunroof, so we uh, don't need to worry about that. What I'm going to do with these is, um, there's two of them, people like to uh, borrow them, so I'm going to put them inside this seat. You just pull on that, it opens up that seat there in the back. I'm just going to put that in there, both of these. So that's where they are, okay. Um, I'll put, when the service book arrives from the auction, I'll put that in there as well, but the intelligent keys, I'll post them to yourself or Lee Allen with the paperwork so don't get lost because these are quite important now what I, was demo what I was talking about with the what I'm going to do is you can take the key out of there this is quite difficult one-handed I'm gonna you, you just flick that switch down and the key will come out I might have to put the camera down So if you just pull that back with your finger now, the key slides out, see? And then that can operate the ignition anyway. So you end up with two pieces like that. So I'm just going to leave that key in the ignition of the car and send, this is the important part, send this box off to you, right? So what the, the other idea about these keys is that, I'll show you this ignition. So that's the ignition, just a normal, looks like an American car, the, the ignition there. 
What this you can just slide this key in here. Like that. That'll turn. The engine will start. So I'm gonna leave it like that for them to ship it with. But normally you'd have this in your pocket. Alright, so all you'd need to do is, I've got this in my pocket now, come up to the car, there's nothing in there, right? I'm just gonna turn that. Now it's got the ignition signal from the smart key. So it knows that the owner of the car has got the key in his pocket and they can start, right? Turn that off and if I put the key, just leave it down here on the ground. <clears throat> now if I try to start the car, that won't turn, it won't start now because there's no signal to turn the immobiliser off. You can see the immobiliser lights flashing on the dash. There's no signal from the key. So you need to have the key like quite close in your pocket when you sit in the driver's seat to uh, get the car to start. So I just put that down on the seat there. Now the key will turn. Off you go. The idea is you don't have to put that in your pot in the ignition if you don't want to. And then the other buttons on there just simply lock and open the doors, that's all. There is something else as well. If I close the car up. And lock the doors using this. Doors are locked and you can see the mirrors are folding in as well, right? So you don't actually need to press the button on this. If you just walk up to the card in your pocket, you'll see there's a button here, right? Press that. Sorry, I may not have seen that. Locked. Okay, that button, just press that. If the key's in your pocket and you're in range of this button and you press it, it locks or unlocks the doors. So the idea now is you just get in the car, keys in your pocket, you don't need to do anything, just turn that, start the car, that's it. Those mirrors are folding in and out on their own, right? This button here cancels that. If you turn that, press that button in, the mirrors will just stay where they are. It's a pretty good like feature anyway, because it folds your mirrors in automatically, but you don't have to have it on if you don't want to. You can press that button and turn it off. This is the... <laughs> Uh, switch inside for the door so if you if you're in the car and you just want to open the door let the kids in or out you just press this and you'll see the door open yeah? that side simply press it again and it will close you just press it once and it automatically closes and pulls itself too if you don't want the kids in the back to mess around with it you can switch it off there just press that off and that disables the auto door. It won't work. It'll still open, but it won't slide automatically. Okay. This is the aircon controls. You just press auto. It brings the display up on the screen. Obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory. Here's the temperature. If I turn that, it turns the temperature up and down. It's both sides, so left and right is different. And kanji there just means the outside temperature, so 9.5 degrees. This button here, it says two and it's got some kanji on it, this one above TV. What that does is that brings down the second screen, so if I hold that in, you'll see this screen will open. And that's a screen in the back for the rear passengers. So you just press it again and you'll see that will close again. This car's also got um, electric curtains. Now I don't know if this is of any interest or not, but this, these electric curtains close automatically. The back ones do as well. I think the left side one's tied up. Okay, so it's 
so dry cut. This gear knob, I'm going to remove it because, again, people like stealing them. I'll put them in the same place as the uh, remotes. So all you need to do when you come to fit it back on and just get it back out of here. It's pretty new, 2002. It's in there, yeah. I'll just show you in the back as well. It's got like a factory, this is like from the dealer, a load cover, so it fits in like perfectly into the back. This should protect the carpet. It might be good when you put your scooter in there. So what you can do with the seats in the normal position, just slide them forward. And you've got, I'm not sure if your scooter will fit there or not, but that's quite a big area. It's covered up by that tray, so it'll protect the carpet. These seats also Hopefully you'll get those as well. So I'll take some photos of that and show you. Uh, just I'll run over some of the mechanicals just briefly. So if I turn the ignition on, see all the lights light up how they should do. I'm going to start the engine. You see the airbag light up in the corner there. The only light that's on now is a seatbelt light. I ain't got my seatbelt on and the door's open. It tells you which doors are open down here. That's driver's door, right side rear sliding door and the rear tailgate is open. And you can also see on there, it's showing a diagram of the transmission. That's controlled by these buttons here. So if I press auto, it switches on the front, the drive to the front wheels as well, okay? But what it does, it, only if the rear wheels are slipping, it starts to engage the front wheels. You can also press this here, this lock button, that locks up the center diff, right? So now, powers to all four wheels all the time, regardless of whether they're slipping or not. So it's good if you get stuck in some snow or whatever. Transmission's got two modes, which is, just switch it back into two wheel drive. If to cancel all that, you just press two wheel drive, it goes straight back into two wheel drive. Transmission's got two modes. Power, it just holds your revs longer before it changes gear, basically. That's what that does. And then the snow acts like a more of a traction control. When you're in any snow, it will just, Look, it will slip the clutches a little bit more to, you know, so you don't spin the wheels and get stuck. Basically, that's what it does. And you can tell when those are engaged down here. Snow at the moment. Press the power, and that's that. Press power again. Switch them off. That's back to just normal driving mode. To engage the back camera, all you do is just stick it in reverse gear. The back camera comes on. It's looking up at the sky now because the back door's open. But if you close the door, you'll see that it points down at the ground. You'll see. I don't know if you can see here. There's these markers on there. They they signify the width of the car. And when you're looking back, you can see how wide the car is <coughs> to um, judge where you are. Are you reversing back? Let me close that door. I'll show you. Now the door's closed, just look down at the ground. There we are. So we're looking straight down, straight down the back of the rear door, and those lines marked out there show you the width of the car, where it is. If you're reversing up to something, you've got yellow, green, and red, so you know when to stop.
Also, I've changed this steering wheel for you. I'll put this better one I've got. It's got a little bit of wear there, but the, it's not nowhere near as bad as the other one that was on there. It looks quite good now. So that's it, uh, Mike. I hope this will be okay for you. If you've got any questions, let me or Paul know and uh, we'll sort everything out for you. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.